The French voters shocked on Sunday by shifting their support from far right to far left. The euro is under pressure this Monday morning and of French stocks and bonds will obviously be closely watched today. On the other hand, oil is downbeat after a sell-off on Friday, while the US dollar is slightly better a bit this morning after easing on a soft jobs report of last Friday in the US. So welcome to the new week of trading with Swiss Coast daily market talk. Well, the second round of French legislative election brought some new surprises on the table, to say the least. Not only Marine Le Pen's far-right national rally didn't win a majority in the parliament, but the new Popular Front, which is a leftist coalition led by the far-left Jean-Luc Mélenchon, secured the biggest share of the cake on Sunday and uh, probably did too well to soothe investors' concerns regarding the stability and also the predictability of the French politics and also well, the good health of the French finances in the foreseeable future. Because, because Jean-Luc Mélenchon also likes to spend big and probably even more than the far-right national rally, he is anti-euro and he is anti-NATO. So if we summarize in just one sentence, France went from favoring the far-right to giving support to the far-left in just about a week time. So we will see what this whole thing means for the future of France, the French politics, the euro and the financial markets. But, but it clearly means that while well, the French are now looking for solutions in two political extremes, which is obviously not the ideal outcome in terms of stability and predictability. Now, the market's reaction to the French election on Sunday was a swift fall in the euro at the open. The Swiss franc gained on the back of an early flow of capital to its safe haven harbor, but, but the euro dollar is now recovering most of the losses before the Europeans have simply stepped in this morning. The euro dollar trades around 108.30 level at the time I'm shooting this video this morning, which is around, well, two hours before the weekly starting bell. On the other hand, the equity features were pointing to the upside when I first turned on my computer, but they're slightly in the negative right about now as the French political risks are not gone at all because the first thing Jean-Luc Mélenchon said after the election results was that he will stick to his huge spending plan entirely and refuse to enter in any parliamentary discussions with Emmanuel Macron. So that's not very promising, obviously, and that could weigh on the French sovereign bonds and keep the spread with the German 10-year yield above the pre-election levels, and that could eventually limit the euro's upside potential in the coming weeks. In equities, shares of French banks like Société Générale, BNP Paribas, and Crédit Agricole will particularly be in focus this morning as the left suggested well, raising banks' mandatory capital buffers and also raising transaction taxes and will also be tempted to raise taxes on wealth, on dividends and on share buybacks. I, I, I. So, the French political headache has just started. The political headache and chaos in the UK, on the other hand, is maybe, but just maybe, coming to an end after more than a decade of turbulence that actually proved to be very, but very, very bad for sterling and for the British assets. So the latter could help the euro pound continue its downtrending, the descending path below the 0.85 level. And from a long-term perspective, the pair has just stepped into the bearish consolidation zone on the Brexit sell-off, but the road is obviously long until the Brits heal from well, the last case tragedy on their island. Now, across the Atlantic Ocean, last week, well, ended with heightened hope of Federal Reserve interest rate cuts following 
a somewhat confusing jobs report at the first sight in the US because the NFP number released in the US last Friday actually showed that the US economy added a little bit more than 200,000 new non-farm jobs in the month of June that was well, higher than around 190,000 expected by analysts. But but the wages growth is as expected by analysts while while the unemployment rate in the US ticked higher to 4.1%, so that's the highest level since late 2021. As such, while investors could look past the stronger than expected NFP figure of last Friday and send the US yields lower, so the US two year yield fell to 4.60% level and the 10 year yield slipped below the 4.30% mark as the probability of a September rate cut from the Fed jumped past 75%. The US dollar index extended losses below its 50 day moving average and is preparing to test the 100 day moving average to the downside which stands near 104.75 level but but the US dollar is better bid this Monday morning as a result of well, more political shenanigans in France. But but later this week, while the US dollar will likely go back to its own business thanks to uh, Fed President Jerome Powell's semi-annual testimony before the Congress and the release of the all-important US CPI update. So on Tuesday and on Wednesday, the Federal Reserve Chief Jerome Powell will likely reiterate the progress that they made on inflation and may even even give a clearer hint on the approximate timing of the first interest rate cut in the US. And on Thursday this week, while the latest inflation report from the US is expected to reveal well, a softening headline CPI from 3.3% to 3.1% and a steady core reading at 3.4%. What everyone is obviously craving for is a set of soft and ideally softer than expected CPI numbers to bring the US Federal Reserve closer to lowering its interest rates later this year. In the equity space in the US, while the rising Federal Reserve rate cut bets and lower US yields help the S&P 500 close the week on a positive note, having reached just another record high level on Friday's trading session. As such, as such the S&P 500 kicked off the second half of this year with its strongest performance since late April and climbed 2% over the course of last week. Nasdaq 100, on the other hand, also extended gains towards new record highs and closed a touch below the 20,400 mark, while the Russell 2000 index traded lower on Friday's trading session and failed to extend gains above its 50-day moving average as a warning that, that the major U.S. indices, while they do not necessarily reflect the mood elsewhere in the US economy and in the US markets because the Russell 2000 is down by more than 5% since its April peak and the slowing economic fundamentals in the US apparently worry the small cap investors more than they worry the big cap investors. So within the big caps, it is apparently well Tesla's turn to shine right now because Tesla shares gain another 2% on Friday's trading session and are up by 50% since their June dip. Elsewhere, while US crude fell more than 1% on Friday's trading session and begins the new week downbeat after last week's failure to clear the $85 per barrel resistance to the upside, the price of a barrel stands just at the bottom of the year-to-date uptrending channel base and should see the benefits normally of rising Federal Reserve interest rate cut bets. So a minor support to the latest rebound in crude oil is seen at $81.85 per barrel level, which is the minor 23.6% Fibonacci retracement on past month's rebound. And a major support is seen near the $80 per barrel psychological support, which also coincides with the major 38.2% Fibonacci retracement on the latest rebound and we should, in theory, distinguish between the actual positive trend in oil prices and a medium-term bearish reversal. So this is all for this Monday. I'm Ipek Özkar Deşkaya and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual.
Follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please, please don't forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading. Thank you.